All righty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Horror Mine, the home for all things horror. My name is Vic Shy, and this is the Scare Score, the show where I tell you whether or not having dolls in your house is a good idea. This week, my friends, we're going over 2017's Annabelle Creation, the prequel to 2014's Annabelle, which itself is a prequel to the first Conjuring film, a prequel's prequel. The film tells the story of the Annabelle doll's origin and how the sweet, totally non-murderous looking doll came to be possessed. Annabelle Creation is directed by new horror director David F. Sandberg, who directed the 2016 horror film Lights Out, which itself was a feature-length film based on his YouTube short of the same name. Even though he is now directing big-budget Hollywood films, Sandberg still makes short horror films that he uploads to his YouTube channel, and I highly recommend checking them out. As always, thank you so much for tuning in every week, and I truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you haven't done so already, feel free to subscribe to the channel for weekly horror movie breakdowns. I wasn't a huge fan of the first Annabelle film and didn't have a lot of expectations coming into this one. However, Annabelle creation took me completely by surprise and I consider it among the scariest the Conjuring universe has to offer. But ladies and gentlemen, you know why we're here. Just how scary is it? Let's find out as we tally up the scare score! Our movie begins inside of the small workshop of the Mullins Toy Company, where the finest handcrafted creepy dolls are made. We see a man hard at work creating the very first Annabelle doll and packages it in a box. A note is suddenly left under his door which says, Find me. The man accepts the challenge and walks into his house for a game of hide and seek with his daughter, B, who left all the notes. The man is Samuel Mullins, who lives happily with his wife Esther and their daughter, Annabelle. Unfortunately, tragedy strikes the Mullins family when Annabelle gets struck by a car while the family was stuck on the side of the road. I'll get it! Twelve years later, we see a memorial marker on the spot where B tragically passed away. A bus drives past it marked St. Eustace Home for Girls. We meet our two main characters, Linda and Janice, best friends and orphans who have a dream of being adopted together. The bus is also occupied by fellow orphans, Kate, Tierney, Nancy, and Carol, the eldest of the group. They are under the care of Sister Charlotte, who reveals that the group are going to be staying at the Mullins residence, who agree to take them in. Father Massey tells them that they won't be seeing much of Mrs. Mullins, as she suffers from an unknown condition due to an accident a few years back. They arrive at the residence and are greeted by Mr. Mullins, who gives them a tour of the house. We see that Janice has a leg brace on her left leg and has to walk around with the help of a crutch. All the girls seem very excited to be able to stay in such a big house, and Mr. Mullins says that they will be sleeping upstairs. Sister Charlotte asks if she and Janice could sleep downstairs due to Janice's leg injury. However, Mr. Mullins is a problem solver and shows off a contraption that he made for his wife years ago. He says that it will only work if the seatbelt is fastened. Click it or tick it. Janice tries out the awesome chair and when she makes it to the top of the stairs, we get our first scare of the movie. This is a very subtle scare that utilizes sound to its advantage. We already get a sense that something is lurking in the dark and the slight sound only enhances the creep factor. Janice notices a closed door with the height marker for B marked on the door frame. She attempts to open the door but Mr. Mullins quickly stops her and tells her that the door remains locked at all times. While Sister Charlotte unpacks her things, a laundry chute in her room begins to open all on its own. Linda tells Janice that all the girls are going out to play but Janice says she's staying behind. See ya! G. What a great friend. As she looks at everyone having fun without her from a window, we see that a little girl slowly approaches her from behind, who disappears as soon as Janice turns over. During dinner, we hear a bell ringing multiple times as we realize that is how Mrs. Mullins calls for her husband. Carol attempts to peek inside of the room, but is unable to get a good look at Mrs. Mullins as he shuts the door. At night, someone slides a paper note under Janice and Linda's door and quickly runs off. Janice picks up the note which reads, Find me. She walks outside to see a note coming from underneath Annabelle's room which says, in here. The room unlocks from the inside and Janice goes right on in. Inside, she finds several toys and dolls, including a large dollhouse underneath a sheet. Inside the dollhouse, she finds a mysterious key which she uses on a nearby closet. She opens the closet and finds the infamous Annabelle doll sitting alone in the dark.
Annabelle is looking as creepy as ever and seems as if she has been waiting for Janice to set her free. She quickly shuts the door and walks away, but the door opens on its own. She closes the door again, but this time locks it with a key, but it opens right back up. Janice is now totally creeped out by Annabelle and decides to throw the sheet over the doll and cover it. As she heads over to the other side of the room, the sheet stands up all on its own. Janice sees Mr. Mullins outside of the window and he seems to notice someone in the bedroom and quickly walks towards the house. She quickly turns around to leave, but she sees someone standing directly behind her underneath the sheet. The sheet begins to walk toward her, but it is revealed that no one is actually underneath and that it was moving all on its own. She quickly heads back to her room as Mr. Mullins makes his way upstairs to see what was going on. The next day, the group of girls are out in a field looking into a well. Nancy tries to get rid of Linda and tells her to go hide so that they can go look for her. And being the innocent little girl that she is, she happily goes looking for a place to hide. She finds a small space to hide underneath the staircase and finds the Annabelle doll sitting alone in the dark. The chair then quickly gets pulled back into the darkness. Upon a second viewing, I notice a small but awesome detail I didn't see the first time. If you look a little above Annabelle's head, you can see the face of a demon with eyes glowing slightly and horns above its head. Linda falls backwards out of the crawl space as the group of girls come back inside the house. That night, Mr. Mullins fixes the laundry chute in Sister Charlotte's room and asks her about a photo she took with other nuns. Who's this? I love the small yet creepy easter egg of the nun in that picture. Even though I wasn't the biggest fan of the nun film, the character is still awesome and scary as hell, even if the movie wasn't. While everyone's asleep, Nancy and Carol are telling ghost stories about Mrs. Mullins underneath a bedsheet holding a flashlight. They suddenly hear Mrs. Mullins' bell ringing outside of their room. The ringing gets closer and closer and they begin to hear footsteps approaching them as their flashlight suddenly goes out. They then see a ghostly figure walking directly in front of their bed she then disappears Although this was just a basic jump scare, it had a really creepy setup that I enjoyed and definitely earned some points. The girl screaming wakes up Sister Charlotte and Mr. Mullins, who tells them that his wife couldn't have scared them as she hasn't been able to walk for years. Sister Charlotte has a conversation with Mrs. Mullins, where she reveals to her that they lost their daughter years ago. We also see that Mrs. Mullins wears a half mask resembling that of a doll to cover her face for some unknown reason. Janice eavesdrops on the conversation and notices a picture of Annabelle and her doll on the wall and for some reason decides to sleep with it at nighttime. As she moves the picture under her blanket, we see that the eyes of Annabelle begin to glow. Janice then hears the song You Are My Sunshine playing from the gramophone all on its own from Annabelle's room. Despite what happened last time, she decides that it's a good idea to go back into the room. Linda also enters the room and notices the Annabelle doll sitting on the bed. Linda wises up however and tells Janice that they shouldn't be here and walks out. Janice picks up a diary and we notice that the Annabelle doll appears to be creepily looking at Janice from the corner of her eyes. She sees a few diary entries made by Annabelle that seemed very happy, but the following pages become blank. A single entry in the middle of the diary reads, Dear Diary, Today, I came home, which has a very dark implication. The bedroom door then suddenly shuts behind her. A couple of creepy looking hand puppets begin to rise from a stand behind her and are seemingly moving all on their own. <laughs> this entire scene is very eerie and does a surprisingly good job in scaring you, utilizing the atmosphere and the implied supernatural powers behind everything that's going on, without actually showing you anything. The light in the dollhouse suddenly turns on and Janice sees little B standing directly behind it. She tries speaking to the dead Annabelle, which I totally do not recommend doing by the way. Annabelle asks Janice for help and then turns around looking a little more demonic than I remember. Janice manages to get out of the room, but it's too little too late. She begins to scream out for Sister Charlotte as all the doors begin to violently shut on their own, and darkness befalls the entire hallway. She jumps onto the chair contraption and forgets to buckle her seatbelt as dark fog begins to come out of Annabelle's room. She manages to click on her seatbelt and the machine begins to make its way downstairs. The machine stops at the bottom of the stairs but automatically starts moving back up as we see demonic little Annabelle at the top of the steps, patiently waiting for her. Back at the top of the stairs, Stairs. She begins looking around and something happens that caught me totally off guard. Guys, I was fully prepared for this jump scare and still got scared. I look to the left 
to the right. Expected Annabelle to pop up in from behind her and in front of her, but I was not expecting her to go fully airborne. Her shoe falls onto the ground from the ceiling and I was expecting her to just disappear after this, but no. She hit the ground faster and harder than Nate Robinson. Sometime later, we see that Janice is now in a wheelchair due to the incident. She tells Sister Charlotte that they need to leave the house. She tells her that she was thrown by an unknown evil presence that is coming after her soul. Janice is now sleeping downstairs on the couch, which means Linda has to sleep alone upstairs. Janice and Linda swap dolls, so that way they will always be with one another, even if they sleep in different rooms. That night, Linda hears noise coming from inside Annabelle's room. She looks through the keyhole and sees the Annabelle doll sitting on a rocking chair moving on its own. She opens the door to find the doll no longer there, but the chair is still moving. She sits inside of her room facing the door and holding a toy that shoots a ball attached to a string. She shoots the ball into the hallway for some unknown reason, and as she tries to retract it back, the string gets caught on something outside. The string begins to slide up against the door and the toy gets yanked out of Linda's hand and into the hallway. Completely terrified, she begins to hear footsteps making their way toward her room. She climbs onto her top bunk and conceals herself in the best defense against ghosts known to man, her blanket. The lights suddenly shut off and something runs inside the room and jumps into the lower bunk bed. She looks down to see large black footsteps on the ground and as she looks on the other side of the bed, she sees the Annabelle doll looking up directly at her and a demonic hand grabs the doll out of sight. The next day, Sister Charlotte wheels Janice outside for some sunlight and attempts to cheer her up. She goes in to check on Mrs. Mullins and we see the other girls all also playing outside. At this point in the film, I thought we were in the clear for scares seeing as it was daylight and there was a generally happy mood outside but I was wrong. Her wheelchair suddenly gets pushed and we see the door to the barn open on its own. An unknown entity in the likeness of Sister Charlotte then grabs a hold of the wheelchair and begins pushing her towards the barn. Poor Janice gets violently thrown into the barn and her wheelchair flies out of reach. Something begins to bang loudly from inside of a closet and Janet retreats underneath the floorboard. We hear footsteps walking directly above her and Demon Annabelle pops up from the darkness and begins vomiting into Janice's mouth. Sister Charlotte and Linda hear her screams coming from inside the barn and rush over to help her. They ask if she's okay and they clearly now possess Janice tell them she's fine. She looks over at Linda who now seems to notice that something is off about her best friend. Linda tells the other girls that something is wrong with Janice but Carol doesn't seem to believe her. She then tells the same thing to Mr. Mullins and tells him about the Annabelle doll that they found. He tells her that they must not go near the doll and realizing that something is wrong rushes into the house. He sees the Annabelle doll sitting at the dining room room table and sees a paper note right next to it that says, found you. Possessed Janice walks into the room and then walks back into the darkness of the hallway, revealing herself to be the demon. Mr. Mullins attempts to defend himself by holding up a crucifix. His fingers then begin to painfully bend backwards and break one by one. We then get a shot that slowly zooms onto the Annabelle doll as we hear Mr. Mullins' bones breaking in his cries of agony off screen. Sister Charlotte hears Mr. Mullins screaming inside the house and tragically finds him dead inside of the dining room. That night, Linda decides to take matters into her own hands and tries to get rid of the Annabelle doll. She grabs the doll from a sleeping Janice and runs out to the well in the field. Sister Charlotte follows her into the field and Linda tells her that the doll is the cause of everything that's been happening. She tosses the doll into the well and is suddenly grabbed by a pair of hands. Sister Charlotte manages to pull her out and shuts the top of the well. The wisest thing I have heard in a horror movie to date. Back inside the house, Linda tries to tell Janice that she got rid of the doll but instead finds it lying on the couch instead of Janice. Sister Charlotte confronts Mrs. Mullins and asks her about the doll. She reveals that soon after Annabelle's death, she and Mr. Mullins pray to an unknown entity to have their daughter back. The contact with the dead Annabelle started off small and she eventually asked her parents if she could move into the doll to be with them forever. The Mullins agreed and things began to go downhill from there. Now, horror movie wise, that would have seemed 
seemed like an obvious no. However, I could never even begin to understand the pain and emotion that comes with losing a child, so the choice they made is completely understandable. They quickly realized that whatever they invited into their house was definitely not Annabelle, but a demon. We then see the real reason why Mrs. Mullins wears a mask. She attempted to approach the demon with a crucifix and a bible, which provoked the demon into clawing Mrs. Mullins eye out. They realized that the demon manipulated their grief of losing Annabelle and tricked them into giving it a body it could inhabit. They contacted the church and sealed the doll inside of the closet, surrounded by texts from the Bible as wallpaper. The group of girls try and approach Janice inside of Annabelle's room, but see that she is holding a knife and cuts Nancy. They rush downstairs and Sister Charlotte goes up to check on the rest of the girls. They hear Mrs. Mullins ringing the bell and they decide to go help her. Inside the room, they find a bloodied mask on top of the bed and find a dead Mrs. Mullins cut completely in half and hanging from the wall. Upstairs, Sister Charlotte finds Linda and Kate and is confronted by knife-wielding Janice. Sister Charlotte begins to pray in Spanish and starts to levitate in the air. Perdóname, señor, perdóname. Linda and Kate run out of the room, but Linda trips and gets dragged away. Outside, the rest of the group get into Mr. Mullins' truck, which of course, refuses to start. Nancy notices a scarecrow directly in front of them, turning its head in their direction, but quickly disappears. They hear banging on top of the truck and quickly rush toward the barn. Carol rushes inside, but the other girls hesitate as they now see the same scarecrow right behind her. The door slams shut and Carol finds herself alone in the barn with the scarecrow. She tries to grab an axe, but the the handle rips off from the blade. The light bulbs then begin to twist themselves off as the scarecrow begins to come alive. As the last light bulb attempts to unscrew itself, Carol quickly climbs up a ladder and attempts to hold it in place. However, the demon ain't messing around and breaks the light bulb right in front of her. She rushes into another room in the barn and sneaks out thanks to help from Nancy. Inside of the house, we see that Linda has retreated into Sister Charlotte's bedroom. She hides inside of the laundry chute and pulls her way down into the basement. Inside Inside the basement, she sees the reanimated dead body of Mrs. Mullins cut in half and crawls after her. <laughs> Zombie Mrs. Mullins is absolutely terrifying, and I absolutely love this scare scene. She rushes back inside the chute and now tries to pull her way back up. She is getting a full upper body workout today! She sees Demon Janice underneath her and smacks the demon's fingers with her flashlight. Linda climbs her way out of the chute and sees Janice at the bottom of the stairs stabbing Sweet Sue in the face. She then decides to hide out in the closet inside of Annabelle's room. Inside, she sees the Annabelle doll looking directly at her. She turns the doll's head so that it isn't staring right at her because that really makes a difference when your possessed knife-wielding best friend is trying to kill ya. Janice finds Linda and throws her to the ground. And just as she is about to end her, Sister Charlotte enters the room and saves her. She quickly puts a rosary around her neck and tosses her and the Annabelle doll inside of the closet. The demon then causes the entire house to start shaking and items start getting tossed all around them. Sister Charlotte and Linda run outside and regroup with the rest of the girls until the police arrive. The police open the closet to find the Annabelle doll sitting inside, but Janice is nowhere to be found. Father Massey tells them that the evil has passed on and that the doll, which was used as the conduit for the evil, is now harmless. The group leave the residence on the same bus that they arrived in, only this time, Linda is sitting alone on the bus, which is truly heartbreaking. Sister Charlotte sits down next to her and tells her that that wasn't Janice back there. She looks down at the doll Janice gave her, the very last memento given to her by her best friend. Sometime later, we see Janice at another orphanage, now claiming to be Annabelle. She gets adopted by the Higgins, the couple from the very first Annabelle film. The Higgins give Annabelle a doll that is actually what the real Annabelle doll looks like outside of the films, which I thought was totally awesome. Twelve years later, we see that Annabelle has been living with the Higgins and has grown into an adult. At night, the Higgins hear a noise coming from outside of their bedroom. Mr. Higgins goes to check it out, but is ambushed by a grown Annabelle who slices his throat. An unknown man then comes into the room and murders Mrs. Higgins. Her screams wake up a sleeping Mia form, who wakes up her husband John. We see that the ending of Annabelle creation links up directly with the events that take place at the beginning of the first Annabelle film, which was done really nicely. John Form walks over to the Higgins' house as the movie ends. In a post credit scene, we see Thanos grabbing the Infinity Gauntlet, displeased with how- wait. 
Who's messing with my script again? In the real post credit scene, we see a dark hallway lit with torches. The torches begin to blow out as we see the nun, Valak, slowly approaching the screen. And that, my friends, was Annabelle Creation! I absolutely love this movie, which caught me completely by surprise. I remember seeing the very first Annabelle film in theaters when it came out back in 2014. I was completely disappointed as at the time, it was a huge step down from the first Conjuring film released a year prior, which was real shame. However, Annabelle Creation is in my opinion way better and scarier than its predecessor and deserves a solid scare score of 70%. The movie had a solid amount of good scares throughout the film. Although it had several basic jump scares, it set up a lot of them quite nicely through atmosphere and truly creepy buildup, and a couple of them caught me by surprise. It would have been nice to see Janice and Linda get a happy ending, as I love their characters and their chemistry. However, the ending sets up the first film really well and I truly appreciate that. I'll definitely be going back and re-watching the first Annabelle film to see if my opinion of it changes after having seen Creation. David F. Sandberg did an amazing job directing this film, which is now one of my favorite films in the universe and I hope that they bring him back for more. But ladies and gentlemen, as always, I hope you enjoy the video. If you have a horror movie you'd like to see on the scare score, let me know in the comments down below. My friends, I hope to see y'all right back here in the Horror Mine. Y'all stick around!